Hello, welcome back to my channel and a very special welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen, I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach and today we're talking about seven white foods and what you can eat instead. We're going to talk all about these food, these white foods and why they're not always the healthiest choices. And then I'm going to share with you some simple swaps that you can make to get in a little bit more nutrition. So if you're excited, give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe. If you're not turn your bell on because I upload new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. Check out the description box down below where I will link nutrition coaching. I do offer personalized to you macros and calories. Highly recommend. This is how I've been successful losing 137 pounds and I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching if you would like to chat with me directly. Links and discounts to my favorite healthy things are also down in that description box. So let's jump into the seven white foods and what you can swap them out with. There's actually a diet called the no white diet or the no white foods diet. And this diet basically eliminates all white foods. Now we don't need to be that drastic. We never want to restrict or eliminate any food. No food is bad or good. There's just some foods out there that are healthier than others. And a lot of the white foods out there just don't fall into this healthy category. Most white foods are very heavily processed, high in carbs, and really contain less nutrients overall than their more colorful counterparts. So these seven white foods can simply be swapped out for a healthier option. So food number one is going to be your traditional white bread. This is one of the foods that is eliminated on this no white diet. And this is one of those white foods that you can make a really simple swap for a much healthier option. Not only is white bread on this list, things like crackers, white flour, and certain breakfast cereals also kind of fall under this same category. When bread flour is refined, so when it's taken from its natural form and made into white flour to create white bread, the germ and oat is removed. Basically all the fiber is stripped from the bread, leaving it with no nutrients. The fiber's gone, the protein's gone. So this basically makes this a food that has no nutritional value. It's super high in carbs and lacking all of those other nutrients. And remember protein and fiber keep us full. So when we're pulling those out of our bread, white bread really doesn't do anything to keep us full and satisfied. A simple healthy swap you can make is picking up a whole grain bread. Better yet, a sprouted bread. Trader Joe's makes an amazing sprouted bread. Ezekiel's a great brand. Even stores like Whole Foods and Sprouts have their, their store brand sprouted bread that's really good. Now, if you can't get your hands on sprouted bread or it's not your budget because it's generally a little bit more expensive, just make sure you're choosing a whole grain bread. This includes things like crackers, flours, and cereals like we talked about in the beginning. Whole grain breads are going to have protein and fiber. This is going to help curb your appetite and help with eliminating that blood sugar spike that also comes from traditional white bread. Make sure whole grain, wheat, oats, sprouted grains are the first ingredient in your bread. Number two is going to be white pasta. Similar to white bread, it really doesn't have any nutritional value and it's very, very calorically dense and very high in carbohydrates. In fact, white pasta is one of the leading causes to weight gain. Part of this is because of the serving size. Two ounces ounces dry is a typical serving size of pasta. This equates to a little less than one cup. And if you think about going out for dinner or even the plates that you're putting together at home of pasta, it can be two, three, four times that serving, making the pasta alone anywhere from 500 to 1,000 calories. That's before adding anything to the pasta. That's just the pasta. All you have to do is swap that out again for a whole grain pasta. Whole grain pastas like whole grain breads are going to contain fiber and some of them even have some protein. The extra fiber in whole grain pasta is going to slow the digestion of the carbs and again not cause that blood sugar spike. You can even consider alternative pastas made from legumes. Bonza makes a really great pasta. There's a lot of chickpea pastas, red lentil pastas, black bean pastas out there. Those are way healthier options if you can't get your hands on a whole grain pasta. Number three is white rice. White pasta, this falls on a list of refined grains. Again, all of the nutrients, fiber, everything is stripped from white rice. White rice isn't unhealthy, it just doesn't give you a lot of nutrients for all of the carbohydrates and the calories. The absence of fiber makes it really easy to overconsume. That's the trend among the three products we've talked about so far, is the lack of fiber makes it easy to overeat and that's where we can get into trouble. So a very simple healthy swap is just swap white rice out for brown rice. Brown rice is just white 
rice that hasn't been processed to the same effect. It's higher in fiber, vitamins, and minerals than white rice, and because it does contain fiber, it's definitely going to help you keep fuller for longer, and you're less likely to overeat brown rice compared to white rice. Also, brown rice, by research, shows that it affects your blood sugar levels a lot less dramatically than traditional white rice. If you don't love brown rice, there's some other options out there. You can pick up things like black rice, quinoa, or bulgur, and basically getting that same effect. Number four is going to be white table sugar. This is going to come as no surprise, but what may come as a surprise are some of the other sugars that fall into this white sugar category. Those are things like brown sugar, honey, turbinado sugar, maple syrup, and agave nectar. These are all essentially the same thing. These are all the same as white sugar. So don't get wrapped up in thinking that these other sweeteners, these other sugar options are healthier because essentially they're not. They offer very little nutrition. Any of the items I mentioned offer very, very little nutrition compared to how calorically dense they are. They are a very simple carbohydrate, so it doesn't take our body a long time to digest them, and they are one of the main leading causes of massive blood sugar spikes. That's why people with diabetes, pre-diabetes have to stay away from white sugar. White sugar has also been linked to unwanted weight gain, type two diabetes, and heart disease. So what you can do is swap that out with fruit. Now fruit gets a bad rap, which is very frustrating for a weight loss and nutrition coach because nobody got fat eating fruit. Fruit has naturally occurring sugar, yes, but fruit also has fiber. So when we eat sugar and fiber together, it slows the digestion process and doesn't cause blood sugar spikes. And you still get all of the sweetness that you get from white table sugar, but you're getting in fiber, minerals, vitamins, nutrients, eat fruit, eat fruit freely. Nobody gained weight eating fruit. Number five is going to be salt. This is your traditional white table salt. White table salt also comes in other colors like pink, blue, and black. There's some really pretty salt options out there. Salt isn't the issue. It's just the Western diet. We tend to eat way more salt than we should be eating. This can cause heart disease, stroke, obesity, and even kidney disease. You're going to find prepackaged meals, processed food, canned food. They are going to have a higher salt content. So I recommend keeping an eye on your sodium, just double checking how much you're consuming each day. So what can you do to swap out that traditional white table salt? You can incorporate colorful herbs and spices. Reducing your intake of salt doesn't mean that you have to leave your food completely flavorless. There's a lot of amazing herbs and spices out there that actually can add even more flavor than regular salt and don't and you won't have those unhealthy side effects. Herbs and spices have things like antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, nutrients, and can play a role in reducing blood sugar spikes and even inflammation. Try using herbs like oregano, basil, thyme, and rosemary, as well as spices like cinnamon, nutmeg, turmeric, paprika, and cayenne pepper to add a flavor to your food without using salt. Number six is traditional white potatoes. Now, of all the white foods on this list, potatoes are probably the most balanced. There's some fiber in there, there's some protein in there, they're a healthy carbohydrate, but there are some swaps you can make from just regular white potatoes to a little bit more healthier option. White potatoes are a great source of potassium, vitamin C, and fiber. They're just a little bit less nutritious than some other options. What happens in the Western culture, again in the Western diet, is people will use potatoes in place of vegetables. So when they make a meal, the potato is their vegetable. And that's again where we can get into some trouble. A potato is a carbohydrate and a starch, and it should be paired with a protein in a vegetable, not replacing a vegetable. So eating white potatoes, absolutely acceptable. You can eat them on a regular basis, but if you want a little bit more nutrition bang for your buck, you can swap out white potatoes for colorful vegetables. Back to vegetables. Side note, sweet potatoes are going to offer you a lot more nutritional value. And remember, they kind of fall on that colorful spectrum as well. But today I want to talk about colorful vegetables in place of white potatoes. Eating vegetables in all the color groups, yellow, red, orange, green, purple, that's the way to go for the biggest nutrition bang. Now, if you really want a potato and you're like, listen, Jen, I don't wanna just eat vegetables, I wanna eat a potato, there are some potatoes that are better options out there. And those are starchy vegetables in general. Things like orange sweet potatoes, purple potatoes, green peas, winter squash, these all make excellent colorful substitutions for white potatoes. And if you're trying to cut back on carbs, reach for non-starchy vegetables, things like zucchini, leafy greens, tomatoes, carrots, bell peppers, pepper and vegetables of the like. So maybe you have potatoes and vegetables. We just don't swap out vegetables for potatoes. And number seven are animal-based fats. 
animal-based fats are fats that come from animal sources, such as our meats that we're choosing as well as our dairy. This is going to be mainly saturated fats, and inherently saturated fats aren't unhealthy. However, a high intake of saturated fats is where we get into trouble. This can cause increased cholesterol and a higher risk of heart disease. So swap some of those animal-based fats out for some plant-based fats. Plant-based fats are unsaturated fats, which are extremely health and heart friendly. Consider swapping some of those animal fats for plant-based fats that are healthy like oils, olive oil, avocado oil, nuts, seeds, avocados, and olives are excellent sources of unsaturated plant-based fats. That simple swap can make a big difference in the calories that you're consuming as well as how much fat and what types of fats you're consuming every day. So we talked about seven white foods that are unhealthy, but guess what? There are some really healthy white foods out there that I want to share with you. These are foods that you absolutely can add into your daily diet. Vegetables like cauliflower, onions, garlic, turnips, parsnips, and mushrooms, nuts and seeds like cashews, sesame seeds, and pine nuts, legumes like white beans, meat, white fish, poultry, dairy products like milk, yogurt, and cheese, and egg whites and coconut are excellent sources of white foods. So what's the bottom line of today's video? You don't need to go on the no white food diet. We don't need to restrict or eliminate any foods from our diet. But if we have the knowledge right up here of some simple swaps that we can make, so we're not eating so many white foods and we're just swapping those out for a little bit healthier options can really help us in our weight loss journey, maintaining our weight and just living a healthier lifestyle overall. And I shared with you some really healthy white foods out there. These are foods you should be adding in regularly. Let me know down in the comments, are there any other white foods that you eat that are healthy and that you really enjoy, let us know down in the comments. Focus on minimally processed foods, whole real foods for at least 80% of your diet and you will reap all the weight loss and health benefits. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not because again, I upload every Tuesday and Thursday. Turn your bell on so you never miss a video. Down in the description box, I will link nutrition coaching and links and discounts to some of my favorite healthy things. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.